Hi, friends. B.J. Thomas was a musician vocalist who died last year in 2021 of lung cancer. Be careful of what you're inhaling. Anyway, he uh, left us with some beautiful music, for my generation anyway, and uh, one of the tunes was called Hooked on a Feeling. And uh, this is the sitar part. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, a little bit of a goofy one take. But I really enjoyed that sitar part. And it's not a pushover either. It's kind of a little bit tricky. Today I wanted to talk to you about how many teachers are out there looking for the anti-Messiah. But not many of them actually are looking for the real Messiah. Well, guess what? He never left us. He told us that he wouldn't ever leave us or forsake us. He'd always be with us. But he had to die and ascend to the heavens in order to pour out the presence of his mind in us. Let me put this baby away. I really should practice more. Maybe even get a band together. I'm uh, 72 and a half, uh, and I don't think I've got the energy for that, but I have to be here to teach you. Yahushua will never leave us. He promised. He's still here. He's reigning in the heart of his bride. He will soon reveal us to the whole world. Yehuchanan, or John 14, says, quote, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The message they call the gospel is actually a warning to repent or perish. The first Nazarene that's what they were really called, were commissioned to go teach the name of Yahuwah to get the whole world to turn from their crimes and to commit their mind and body to obey the covenant, obeying all that we were commanded to obey. Matthew 28. We're called Nazarene. He said, I am the vine, you are the Nazarene. They weren't Christians. That didn't come until later. They were called Christians at Antioch at first, but they weren't calling themselves that. Those were the people in Antioch seeing how we were, thought we were Cretans. That's what the word really meant then. The first step is to be immersed, calling on the one name that's given at four, Acts 4.12. There's only one name, and it's Hebrew. It's not Greek or Latin. He has no other name but this one name as our deliverer. Yahusha. That's spelled Yod, He, Ua, Shin, Ayin, Yahusha. That name is Hebrew. It's not Greek or Latin or Korean or any other language. It's you call a person by their name in the hearing of the name. By hearing. That's where we understand it. And uh, that name is Hebrew, and it's never going to be any other name. It won't alter itself. It can't. If you call on Elmer or John or some other distorted name, that's not it. J-E-S-U-S is less than 500 years old. It only appeared in the 17th century. It came from a Latin distortion, I-E-S-V. There is no other deliverer, Yashiyahu or Isaiah, 
43.11. Just read that. By obeying, we will receive the Ruach HaKodesh. That's the spirit of Yahushua. Now you can find that at uh, Acts 5, verse 32. He will not give his spirit unless you obey him. And immersion is the first step. He's our helper and promised to never leave us. Revelation 22:14 and Hebrews 10:26 show us a completely different message than most people ever hear. Read those. Revelation 22:14 and Hebrews 10 verse 26. You can't continue to sin. That's what it says. And what is sin? It's breaking the commandments. The 10 commandments. There is no replacement theology or dispensationalism. These are debates that theologians have to argue with one another about what to obey. They're just obeying themselves and what they want you to obey. They don't usually bring that up to teach you. Replacement theology, yeah. That's where Gentiles replaced the tribes of Israel in the promise. Really? Well, read Yirmiyahu chapter 31, and that'll expose that lie. They're liars. There is no dispensationalism. The commandments are, are forever. He says so. They're eternal. It's the eternal covenant. But um, if you obey the Ten Commandments and trust in the redemptive blood of Yahushua, then you're no longer under the law the old law, the old covenant, which was animal blood. And that was it described as written on a scroll for the priesthood to slaughter animals at Deuteronomy 31, verse 26. And it's explained as being obsolete at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. What's the renewed covenant? It's in his blood, not animal blood. But you can't keep sinning. Sin is sin. What is it? 1 John 3, 4. Sin is lawlessness. And if you're just believing something and you're not obeying, then you've got a dead belief. You know, There's no other parachute available for you. So just, um, what was that old covenant? It was written on an animal hide. And it was placed outside the ark, beside the ark. It was, it was not written in stone. It was it was the prescriptions for animal sacrifices and blood temporarily covered the crimes. Stop believing that you can intentionally keep on sinning. I'm going to put a picture up here and show you that the name that you need to be calling on is not the one that you've been hearing being taught. I-E-S-V or I-E-S-O-U-S or J-E-S-U-S. That's not his name. His name is Hebrew. Here's a picture of the first edition of the King James Version. A little section here showing what they replaced his name with throughout that first edition of the King James. The reason that they did this is because they translated the King James directly from the Latin Vulgate. That's a Roman Catholic translation. And it was basically from Jerome or, you know, Hieronymus Eusebius Sophronius. There is no one really named Jerome. Uh, in, in like 391 through 403 when he translated into, into Latin. And he did away with the word staros, which means stake, and he put in crux. And he replaced the name of the deliverer. The Hebrew name is not J-E-S-U-S or I-E-S-V or any of that. It's Yahusha. But he didn't put that in the translation. So it isn't in the Latin Vulgate. So when the translators, there were about 12 of them, that worked to translate the King James Version, the translation in the first edition showed us the Latin Vulgate's version, I-E-S-V, shown in the picture. It was Yahusha, not J-E-S-U-S, since no one ever heard the word J-E-S-U-S until the late 17th century. The Catholic Latin Vulgate had wrongly replaced the true name with I-E-S-V, and the Anglican Catholic King James Version carried that forward. And since that's because the King James Version was the Catholic Latin Vulgate, 
you know, basically in English form. Uh, they use the word Lord, L-O-R-D, to translate the Latin word Dominus. The translators never obeyed the commandments, so they did not have the spirit of Yahusha in them to guide them. Thanks for watching. Remember Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah. We will not see him again until we say, Blessed is the one coming in the name of Yahuwah. Join NazareneLife.com and we'll see you in the next exciting video. Bye.